Hi, I'm Tracy McDaniel. At Choose New Jersey, we work to attract jobs and businesses to our state by promoting New Jersey's world-class advantages for companies big and small. That's why we're proud to support programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by AmeriHealth Caritas, parent company of Perform Care. Care is the heart of our work. New Jersey Natural Gas, proud to support education in our communities. Johnson & Johnson, New Jersey Sharing Network, dedicated to saving lives through organ and tissue donation. NJM, auto insurance, homeowners insurance, and more, with a focus on safety and financial stability. Choose New Jersey. Our mission is attracting companies to the Garden State. And by Wells Fargo. This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. See, you go right into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. I mean, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. Welcome to One on One. I'm Steve Adubato. It was my pleasure to introduce here on our set Kathleen Enerlich. She is the executive director of a great organization called Perform Care New Jersey, which does and is... Perform Care connects children and families to mental health, developmental disabilities, and substance abuse treatment services in the state. We're an organization that works 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so a parent can call at any time of the day or night, and if they're concerned about their child for any reason, they can give Perform Care a call, and we will help work through what's happening and what should be a next step. Well, you know, Kathleen, as we put your information up, the website, people are going to be saying, hey, I need help. I know of someone who needs help. But mm -hmm. let's put this in perspective. Mm -hmm. You're created how, why, where, where does it even come from? Okay. Well, we're part of the New Jersey Children's System of Care. So it, it was a state plan over 10 years ago to begin to coordinate services through one single front door. Uh, before that, it was fairly chaotic uh, in terms of where a parent would call if they needed help. Most often, parents didn't know what to do. Now, we have one front doorway to many different kinds of services for children, whether the child has an intellectual or developmental disability uh, or perhaps needs some type of substance abuse service. So there's really one front door, one phone number. And uh, I mean, when you think about how concerned parents are for their kids and how busy they are, I mean, it makes great sense. You know, Kathleen, we've, we've done some work together. Mm -hmm. You know, we've covered some of the initiatives that uh, Perform Care has been involved in. Yeah. What has really struck me <clears throat> is the number of people dealing with behavioral health issues, mental health issues. Do, have we even scratched the surface of those who need help getting the help? Well, I'll tell you, we served more children last year in New sure. Jersey than ever before. And what I mean by children, I, I should say children, youth, or young adults. Uh, we serve up to the age of 21. Last year, 45,000 children received services that came through our front door. We connected them. Describe what kind of services we're talking about. Well, it's... For example. Okay, so for example, we had um, uh, the first detox program ever to be established in the state of New Jersey. And actually, that was just a few months ago. Um, we've all heard of the overdoses and all the news stories around uh, substance abuse. Sure. And the children's system of care up until that time did not have a detox program. And so that was a new service that began and we can now uh, again connect the kids that have that particular issue. I mean obviously they're, they're using and abusing uh, to a degree that they have to go through uh, detoxification. So that's a new service that's part of the system of care. And what you begin to see is that more and more gets added. Uh, we also uh, provide uh, summer camp services for kids who are developmentally disabled. We connected 1,500 kids last year to summer camp. What do you mean connected them? Well, we, uh, there's a process to get involved uh, for families if they would like to send their, you know, their child to a camp. Uh, and they don't know where to go. 
and they don't know where to go. And uh, again, we, we partner really well with the state, and so we're really pleased to have a strong partnership and collaboration with the state so that we can provide a full array of services. So that was something new last year that we did. Um, also the fact that we handle eligibility determinations for developmental disability. Now, I know that what sounds that like mean? a lot, okay? But in order for um, uh, a, a young person who has uh, a developmental disability, in order for them to get any type of services in the state, they have to be deemed eligible. Decision has to be made that they have some form of mental or physical limitation that they meet the criteria. And who decides this? That. Well, as of January 2014, Perform Care makes that decision. So you were yeah. deemed by the state to be able to make that determination? Mm -hmm. To make that determination. That's a big deal. It is a big deal. And I'll, I'll even say, uh, take it a step further. I mean, I can tell you, families would send packets of information to Perform Care. And the system was, was built upon paperwork. Mm. And think about a family who's having to deal with uh, a, a, a needy child at home, having to sit yeah, there paperwork. and fill out paper, paper, paper. Well, what we were finding as we were getting all this paper was that very often a, a parent would leave out some vital information. And without that, we couldn't make a determination. We couldn't make a decision. So we're about to uh, actually release a family portal that's online. Family goes to the Perform Care website, which is what I put it up right now, team. They go up to the Perform. They go to the Perform Care website. What happens? And what happens is they'll see um, a link to a family portal. And as you would sort of register with your bank and and set up a bank account, you would be able to register your child, and you would be able to fill out the paperwork online. Press the send button, and it comes electronically to Perform Care. So again, we're looking to streamline and make it easier for parents who are busy and who have a lot to take care of at home. Make the connection between behavioral mental health issues mm -hmm. and actual physical issues, problems that children have. Well, um, you know, the, the connection really, Steve, right now is there's such a focus and a movement towards integrating care, whether the child has a mental health issue or has a physical issue. And when you think about it, we should be treating the whole child. And there is a movement, a pilot that's being started for kids uh, called Behavioral Health Homes. And this pilot- Behavioral? Health Homes. Go ahead. Now, it's not a facility. It's Go not ahead. a home. But what it is, it's a place where a uh, parent is receiving coordination of care for mental health issues, and they're going to have a nurse who will do an assessment on that child to determine what else is going on. Does the kid have diabetes, or does the kid have um, asthma? And that, that group of people will help coordinate both the physical health of that child as well as the mental health of that child. So you think about it, it's like a one-stop shop. Mm. Parent goes one place and they get connected. Before I let you out of here, I've always been struck by your passion, yeah. your enthusiasm <clears throat> for the work you do and the people you serve. Where does it come from? It comes from my past. It comes from uh, my grandmother who uh, became ill many years ago. And listen, when I was growing up, there were not programs in the community. Uh, the services were not there. And so the choice that we had to make was, do we put her in an institution or do we try to care for her at home? And that decision, unfortunately, was the institution. And it was that moment of, of sitting in a doctor's office uh, and, and she was sitting beside me and I was talking with her and she said, are you gonna put me away? Hmm. And I had to answer that question, that yes. And it was that moment when I said, I gotta do more. And, and my whole career has been based on getting people out of the hospital that's right. and, and getting them community services. And that's what I believe in and, and feel very strongly about. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. You're helping a lot of people. Thank you. Kathleen Enelik is the executive director of Perform Care New Jersey. And um, that's why we do this program, the Bring Important Programs and people like you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you. To see more one-on-one -on -one programs, visit us online at oneonone.org.
If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD and follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. We are pleased to welcome Melissa Faulkner, Director of the Career Development Center at Felician College. Good to have you. Thank you for having me. Um, let's, let's talk about this. You talk to students all the time. Mm -hmm. They're leaving Felician, they're trying to go out into the workforce, and they, um, they make certain assumptions as to what is expected of them. Now, you told our producers there are three things that they need to do to get ready. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. Um, have a solid resume? Yes. What are the other two things? I think that they have to be prepared with what's out there in the real world. People of their generation are not making the decisions. What does that mean? It's a more conservative world out there. The people who are making the hiring decisions are people in my generation, my parents' generation. We expect students to show up in suits. We expect to have resumes that are tailored specifically to those open positions. We expect them to have researched the field prior to interviewing. Someone says, wait a minute, hold on. I'm going for a job at an online company. I got t-shirts and jeans. What's the big deal, you say? We all wish we could work for Google. <laughs> we certainly do, but that's just not the reality. Once you have the job, it's a different story. If it's, you know, you can wear khakis every day, that's you gotta fine. Get the, you got to get the job. You have to get the job Go first. ahead. You have to. So you have to wear a suit. You have to be, pre be prepared to interview. I know that a lot of students these days struggle with the one-on-one -on -one interaction. They're too busy texting. But guess what? They have to see that you're a good fit. So what do they want to do? They want to bring you in and they want to meet with you face to face. Sometimes more than one person wants to meet with you face to face. So it's very good to practice interviewing skills as well. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. Okay. By the way, I wish we had a Chiron up, a thing at the bottom of the screen that said, Steve's voice is really screwed up because of his allergies. It's not oh. the way he normally talks. Oh. How about if you go in for an interview and you have a frog voice like this? What do you do? I would make a lighthearted <laughs> joke about it. That's me, though. <laughs> but in all seriousness, you're going in for the interview. Sure. How many young people? I was telling our producers, Jackie and Jacqueline, was I not just telling you before as we were prepping for this? I said, there was someone, I'm not going to name any names, it doesn't matter. But I met someone, there are people who come in all the time looking for jobs here. And I met someone who was looking for a job. And I met her for about 30 seconds, less than that. And I knew somehow, just by the way she introduced herself, or didn't introduce herself, and no eye contact, weak handshake. Mm -hmm. And I knew that because we were a communications and broadcasting operation that she couldn't work here. Right. Am I being unfair? No, absolutely not. Because I think some people thought, why can't you give her a chance? And I thought, no, it's what we do. We meet people, we have to be out there and talk, right. talk about that. Well, I think that there are three reasons for the interview. And number one is to see, can someone do the job? And usually they can. They have the skills or they're trainable. Will they do the job? But the most important part is, will they fit in? And that's why you have to sit down with them, and you have to meet with them, and you have to see what they're about. You have to dig deeper than just what's on the resume. What do you like to do for fun? How would your former supervisor describe you in three words? How would your best friend describe you? You know, if there's something on their resume like they like to skydive, well, that says a lot about their personality, mm. doesn't it? So I think you have to dig deeper and get that stuff out to see if they can really fit in with the environment of that what particular company. What about the whole challenge connected with the inability to be present because of all this? I know. Talk about it. It's a huge challenge. I think that students have to do whatever they can to brush up on interviewing skills. What, forget the last, last 20 years of being distracted? Right. Seriously. Right. You're right. Well, we have a happy medium, at least at Felician College. We have an <laughs> online system Talk called Interview it. Stream. What is it? It's called Interview Stream, and it has a webcam. You have a webcam built in on your laptop. And what you do is you log in and you tell this resource what type of interview you will be going for. And an actor pops up on the screen and asks you certain questions. It videotapes your answers, and then the worst part, it plays it back for you. And you have to watch yourself interview. And you're your own worst critic. We all are. Why is it good to see it? Um, well, number one, it has a counter on the bottom that says how many times you say, um, um like, uh, like, you know, whatever, <laughs> which is, it's so funny. The students love that part, but they really do improve and you could do it more than once. I can assign it to somebody. I can give them feedback, but it kind of meets them halfway in their world of technology and plus what's expected of them out there. 
But the reality is so interesting that you're doing that, which is really good, but in the end, it is about sitting face to face. Mm -hmm. And not with the actor on the computer, but that's better than not having any preparation. Um, how about the idea of rejection? Mm -hmm. A whole bunch of students that are leaving Felicia and other places are going to be rejected. They right. get discouraged. Right. How do you keep them in the right frame of mind? You just got to keep plugging along. We live in one of the most densely populated areas of the country. How many colleges are here? We're saturated. Plus, we have students who go away to college and then come back. They're all competing for the same jobs. Rejection is bound to happen. Part of the business. Yes, absolutely. What about these career fairs? <clears throat> Excuse me. Someone goes to a career fair, they go, well, this is not a job. Mm -hmm. Just going there to meet people, network, no big deal, you mm -hmm. say. I say networking is wonderful. Get as many business cards as you want. Usually when we have job fairs, every single employer there is hiring for either part-time or full-time positions. How do we know that? How do we know that? Do, we, do we really think they're looking? Yeah, I do. I really do you think do. most of them are. I do. But it's not a bad idea just to get their business cards and keep in touch with them every few months, just in case. You never know. What do you say? Hi. You met me at the Felician right. job fair, yeah. just checking in, Jim Smith, Mary Jones, whatever. Yep. Thanks for taking the time to speak with me. I'm still very interested in your, your company, whatever it might be. Just keep in touch. That's not being a pest. No. Don't do it every week. You know, do it <laughs> once every few months, and I think you'll have better How luck. How you get into this whole thing? Oh, boy. I started at Seton Hall. Actually, I have a degree in diplomacy and international relations, but I was a graduate assistant in, in the Career Center, and I fell in love with it helping students find their niche. Why do you like this? Uh, I like the success stories. I like the students who come in. They don't know what they want to major in. They certainly don't know what they want to be when they grow up. And you just kind of take them through all the steps. And then in the end, they have something. They feel good. They've accomplished something. And Felicia is very committed to helping these students. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. If you don't help them, I mean, even the smartest student academically, they may not have any idea what it takes out there in the marketplace. Our particular college population, there are a lot of first-generation college students. So they really don't have role models as far as this goes. How do I become a professional in life? So we really do all that we can to help them. We expose them to employers all the time. Uh, we bring them to campus. We do mock interviews. We just have people come and talk about their stories, the good, the bad, everything, so that they're exposed to it, so they get a better idea. They have real-life examples then. Three things again, a solid resume, mm -hmm. be comfortable talking about yourself, mm -hmm. and research the company before you go in for the interview. Why? Why? Because in some way, shape, or form, they're going to say, why do you want to work for us, or what do you know about <laughs> us? And if you say, I just want a job, you're not getting a call back. <laughs> I love when people, that, I always ask people, Have you? what do you know about our company? Mm -hmm. What? Well, do you know what we do? Yeah, you do TV. But they didn't look at the shows. They have no idea. That's it. We're done. Right. And it's not, it's not an egocentric thing, but if you don't know who we are, what we do, I mean, it's cra where we air, right. it's a turnoff, right? Absolutely. It's Just one of checking. the biggest turnoffs. Just yeah. want to make sure. Mm -hmm. Melissa Faulkner from Felician College. Good stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back right after this. That was good. To see more one on one programs, visit us online at oneonone.org. If you would like to express an opinion, Email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. We are pleased to welcome Robert Kravitz, author of a terrific book called Blue Ribbon Story. <clears throat> Excuse me, an entrepreneur's success in education. He's a former entrepreneur. He became principal of a school, school number three in? Fort Lee, New Jersey. And now he's uh, the superintendent in Englewood Cliffs. What is your deal, man? You, you were a successful entrepreneur doing what kind of work? I was uh, selling cakes and desserts to restaurants, country clubs around the state. And then uh, what happens? I needed a change. Sold everything, had a business, had a building. Um, actually went to culinary school after college and uh, decided it was time to, to change all my life and, and MBA the same way and sold it and went into education. Because? Why education? I just loved, you know, I was teaching chefs how to sell cakes. I was teaching uh, how to run a business to everybody. What, what's the expectation? Why not teach children? Uh, and I loved, I went into te teaching business in high school and I loved it because I was teaching the real business. I was teaching how to write a business plan how it felt like to sit in front of the SBA and ask for 
alone. That's mm -hmm. what I was teaching kids. Uh, and that was the greatest experience of my life when I made that switch. So what happens? Do you begin to realize that you have some sort of secret to success or what happens? There's no secret to success. There's no magic bullet. It's just hard work. It's understanding the big picture, uh, finding the entrepreneurial way of an angle. What's, what's the best way to make it work? Yeah, but you know, you're an entrepreneur. I consider myself an entrepreneur. We have this production company. If we weren't entrepreneurs, we'd be out of business. But someone would say, many say, education, public school is not a business. And to take an entrepreneurial approach is simply just apples and oranges, you say. There's a difference between business and entrepreneurship, right? That's what the entrepreneur is the person who takes the one McDonald's and makes it 16 McDonald's. The businessman is the person who runs the day-to-day -day operations. So when we look at schools, and they always talk about this business approach to schools, it's more of an entrepreneurial way. How can we get other funds? How can I utilize the resources that I have? That's Give what, us an example of, as, as to what you did, what you saw, and what succeeded. So, you know, in, in school three, when we looked at the programs, we were spending a lot of money, tremendous amount of money on new programs, curriculum. This is the buzzword of what's going to solve the problem of children not learning. So I sit with a staff, just like we sit with a sales team. What does it take to sell the product? Well, I don't like this. I don't like this. Don't tell me the script that I have to use. So at the end of the day, this is my expectation. This is what I want sold to the kids. What are you going to do? I want to throw out these books. Fine. As long as you meet your expectation, you meet your goals, I'm a happy camper. Yep. When we did that, we actually lowered our cost per pupil. Because you got rid of what wasn't working. That's it. <laughs> Isn't that what businesses do? Did you get involved in return on investment? Absolutely. In, in the 2012 budget for the state of New Jersey, we were listed. We had the second lowest cost per pupil with the second highest test results in the state. That meant, wait a minute, hold on. You, you had to be driving people crazy. Absolutely. Menu. Everybody I knew was going, well, you're not following it, including when the newspaper called and said, you, run a, you turned a school around, made it a blue ribbon. What new program did you use? Had to be new. Had to be new, and I said, nothing. We threw out all the things that didn't work, asked the teachers what they wanted to teach, put everything in line, and got everyone involved. The comment was, that's not a good story. I need something innovative. Tell me about it. laptops. Tell me about something else. I said, no, it was old-fashioned teaching, and it worked. We went from 66% passing in one grade to 91% in one year, and all because getting everybody on board. What's the triangle theory? Triangle theory is, you know, we talk about a parent-teacher relationship. Where's the administrator? I hold the purse strings. I want to sit in those meetings. If you need tutoring, what's the cost? Where's the return on my investment? That's how you evaluate a teacher. That's how you evaluate a parent. That's how it's all three angles come together with the child in the middle, pushing the same amount of pressure, the child succeeds. It's like an arrowhead, straight up. What kind of reaction do you get <clears throat> from the teachers? The teachers are on board. They, they, they didn't understand it, but just like an entrepreneur, I work with them. I'm in the trenches. That's where I came from. I'm a, I'm a worker. So you need help? I'm there for you. What do you want to buy? I'll buy you anything you want, but I want to see it utilized every day. I want that return on my investment. Yeah, but when, I'm always fascinated by you, Robert. When you started telling people you were going to hold them accountable for performance, I've had lots of discussions with some educators who say, you cannot hold us accountable for the performance of the student when there are so many other variables impacting on the student's performance that have nothing to do with the teacher. It's a team which effort. Which is also though. true. It, it absolutely is true. But it's, that, it's the team effort. It's that triangle. Because there are teachers who don't call the parents. But just like with any corporation. And there are some parents who are not helpful. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. But when the teacher calls and the parent doesn't respond, that's one thing. Now you have an administrator calling and saying, I'm here with the teacher. Where are you? <laughs> it's a different spin on that because now there's a guilt factor. You know, we all hate guilt. So when that message is left, because if I'm the ultimate person as a principal and now they want to come to me to complain about the teacher and I say, the teacher and I were here at 7.30 ready to tutor your child. I paid the teacher and I was here. Where were you? That's a different aspect of that. Why would you write the book? It's time to change. It's time to change every Every angle has to change. Administrators have to look differently about how we're doing education. Parents need to get involved. This is the largest percentage of their property taxes. Rarely do people come out for Board of Education meetings. Rarely do they understand where, this thing's, where their money's going. Why?
and teachers need to change the way we outlook. We're, we've signed up at Englewood Cliffs. We have Dale Carnegie coming to train our teachers. Yeah, you're, you're now the superintendent of Englewood Cliffs. That's you have correct. Dale Carnegie coming in. To train the teachers on customer service. We're the first one in the state. Why, are, why aren't schools looking at it like a business and saying, I need to train my staff in customer service? Why, why, let me ask you something. You love what you were doing at school number three. Why become a superintendent in another school district? Take it to the next level. Take it to the next level. Um, now we're doing it across two schools. What's it? Take it, meaning this, this passion, this desire to change the way we look at education. It has to change. You want to take this across the country, don't you? I want people to understand that if we don't change the way we're doing things and stop with all these fuzzy little things that aren't making a difference for kids, we have a real problem. We have a real problem. Even when they created the Euro, you know, in 1998, they had the, the Lisbon Convention and, and they figured out what was going to make education, what was going to make all the countries better? Education. Mm. And they had to be equal. We're having this problem where we're not talking, we're not having a real conversation. There's things called, you know, extending the school year, uh, extending the school day, all these little fancy things. It's not solving the problem. In school three, we solve the problem. Englewood Cliffs, we're on that same path. We're making kids learn, getting them involved, getting the parents involved, looking at the return on investment. Within the same budget, how do I utilize my staff more? I mean, we're, we're limited with our capital resources. We, the natural resources are our kids. So now our human resources. Get, the, get those teachers involved. And they rise to the occasion. What do you want? What do you need? Just like with any employee. You love it. I love it. Uh, the author is Robert Kravitz. Blue Ribbon Story, an entrepreneur's success in education. I have a feeling a lot of folks are going to be talking about this, Robert. I, it, you know what? It's a great story, and Good I stuff. did it. Glad you told it here. Thank you very much. Thank you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by AmeriHealth Caritas, parent company of Perform Care, New Jersey Natural Gas, Johnson & Johnson, New Jersey Sharing Network, NJM, Choose New Jersey, and by Wells Fargo. Promotional support provided by The Record, North Jersey's trusted source, and NorthJersey.com. And by Commerce Magazine. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.